farm animal experience. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. One of the shelter's workers says there has been more public interest in cinnamon, but separating them would be inhumane. I think the I goat agree. does think it's a dog. I think so, too. So cute. I it's love like wagging story. its little goat tail. <laughs> no running around <laughs> and playing. That's what's making news in America this morning. Have a great Wednesday. It's Wednesday, March 29th. The shooter killed six people and still had plenty of guns left over. We start here. The investigation into a school shooting reveals a string of weapons purchases, all of them legal. Was there anything that could have been done to stop someone from buying seven guns at five different locations? The new details impacting the gun debate. Authorities agreed it would be safer to house migrants in Mexico than that housing caught fire. There's a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, and really a lot of fear again in another border town. Dozens of people are dead. We'll take you to Juarez. And Donald Trump hasn't been arrested no matter what the internet tells you. Wait a second, where are the safeguards here? How are you making sure these are not misused? What happens when fake photos can even fool the fact checkers? From ABC News, this is Start Here. I'm Brad Milkey. In the wake of mass shootings in this country, there's a familiar pattern. We have got to recognize that weapons of war are too prevalent in our streets. Gun control advocates say once again this is a sign that guns need to be more tightly regulated in this country, while gun rights groups say banning guns doesn't do anything. Legal firearms, they say, aren't the problem. And I think ultimately I think what this does is highlight uh, some of the mental health issues, the mental health crisis we have in this country. But when you look at the 10 deadliest shootings in the history of this country, from the concert shooting in Las Vegas to the Pulse nightclub in Orlando to churches and schools, each of those 10 shootings were carried out with legally purchased firearms arms and ammunition. Lots of ammunition. Authorities say the suspect shot through a door at the Covenant School, a private Christian school. Someone that had multiple rounds of ammunition prepared for a confrontation with law enforcement. This week, when three nine-year-olds were gunned down at a Nashville elementary school along with three more adults, police immediately investigated the weapons. It turns out there were a lot of them, all purchased legally. So once again, the question will be, if this case matches the patterns we've seen so many times, is there anything else to be examined here but the laws around guns? ABC's Alex Perez has been talking to everyone connected with this shooting. He's in Nashville now. Alex, first off, you've been spending more time around the school. I mean, what has it been like there in, in the 24 hours since? These incidents are always devastating, but particularly devastating when we're talking about Three children, each nine years old, killed in this attack. This community is not only focusing on the three staff members that were killed, but especially focusing on those three young kids. A world that does not take refuge in violence. We've seen so many parents, um, so many families come out here outside the school just to pay their respects. We woke up this morning and we were like, we want to do more than just look at social media and look at all these posts that are being made. Just to stop and pause for a moment and sort of hug their kids because uh, they are imagining, you know, what this could be if it happened to them. It's going to be something I never forget. And these parents, I cannot even put myself in their shoes and even be able to get out of bed. You know, I, I just don't understand. Well, and we've really essentially been able to now see inside the school at the time of the shooting. And, you know, a warning here to listeners that some of this audio from police is extremely disturbing. But, Alex, I mean, what have we learned about how this unfolded? So uh, authorities released two body camera videos. Uh, those are the body camera videos of the two officers that fired their weapons and took out the suspect. Um, these kids are all locked down, but we have two kids that we don't know where Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. It's hard to describe how nerve-wracking that video is. Let's go! The school alarm is blaring in the background um, because an active shooter uh, protocol has been uh, put into place. Keep pushing. Go. 
and you see the officers going through the entire school looking for the shooter. Shots fired, shots fired, shots fired, move. And we now know they ended up locating the shooter on the second floor uh, of the school building. The shooter, according to authorities, was actually uh, at a window and had been firing at arriving officers at their police cruisers from the second floor down outside into the parking lot. Stop moving! Stop moving! You hear them yell, put down the gun, don't move, and it appears that doesn't happen, and they quickly uh, fire their weapons, and the shooter is killed. The other, I guess, discovery once the shooter was disabled was the guns that the shooter was carrying and also just the amount of weaponry that the shooter had purchased previously to this, right? What, what do we know about the, the sort of arsenal that was acquired here? Yeah, an, an arsenal, an eye-popping amount of weapons uh, were discovered. We've interviewed the parents of uh, Audrey Hale, and we've determined uh, that Audrey bought seven firearms. Authorities uh, determined through their investigation that the shooter had actually purchased seven guns in five different locations, legally purchased all of those weapons here in the state. Uh, three of those weapons were used yesterday uh, during this horrific tragedy. And we know from uh, authorities that the shooter's parents say uh, the shooter was being treated by a doctor for an emotional disorder. If, if it had been reported, there's not a law for that, but had it been reported that she was suicidal, or that she was going to kill someone and had been made known to us, then we would have tried to uh, to get those weapons. But as it stands, we had absolutely uh, no idea. And of course, that has now renewed the conversation about uh, gun reform, gun laws, and was there anything that could have been done to stop someone from buying seven guns at five different locations? This is not hyperbole. As a nation, we owe these families more than our prayers. We owe them action. We saw President Biden come out and, and demand that Congress act um, to, to change gun laws. But at this point, there's no indication that that's going to actually happen. Well, and you actually spoke to people who knew the attacker, right? And remember, we talked yesterday about how the shooter was assigned female at birth, then more recently identified as trans, was, we think, maybe using he and him pronouns. That's what it looked like on social media. A lot of people close to the shooter continue to call this person she, and that's you know what we hear in a lot of these interviews. But more importantly, were these people saying that they expected this person to go out and commit a massacre? Yeah, uh, you know, authorities identified the shooter as Audrey Hale. And so we talked to people who knew... Audrey Hale, who have known Audrey Hale for a very long time, and all of them had the same reaction. They were in shock. Just the big shock. It was a big shock to accept. It was um, it's heart wrenching, honestly. One friend who knew the shooter since uh, junior high uh, tells me that recently uh, the shooter had started to complain about. Uh, bouts with depression. And what happens on social media? More of a venting. It's a vent. Venting far as something, depression, that depression taking over. But uh, something like this, an attack of this caliber, is something that never occurred to any of the people who were close to Hale. Yeah, now we're seeing the fallout around Nashville. Uh, Alex Perez, they were in Tennessee. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Next up on Start Here, they fled danger, survived a harrowing journey, but it was being trapped in the detention center that killed them, a humanitarian tragedy in Mexico. After the break. University of Utah senior Lauren McCluskey repeatedly asked for help. It was like getting hit by a baseball bat. <laughs> You have a powerful institution. And you have the audacity to try to cover your ass. Friday night. A lot of troubling information was never public until now. Never before seen surveillance video, exclusive interviews. I'm sorry, I couldn't protect their daughter. This stunning investigation. Could Lauren's life have been saved? Friday at 9, 8 central on ABC. Tonight, the shooter, the victims, and what we're now learning from inside that school. Plus, tracking a new cross-country storm. Tornado victims again in the path. More Americans turn to the most-watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir.
right now in America with so much at stake. Thank you for making ABC's This Week America's number one news and politics show on Sunday mornings. Elephants are more like us than we ever thought possible. They speak to each other in ways we're just beginning to understand. It's not just noise. It's an ancient wisdom formed over generations. They'll share their secrets with us. If we only listen. 13 women opened their doors to the man who would end their lives. Another body in Boston. A killer held Boston in a state of fear. It was a crime spree that stumped police for years. Now, journey deep behind the deadly details. They had hundreds and hundreds of suspects. And into Truth and Lies, The Boston Strangler, the new true crime podcast series. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. And watch Boston Strangler, starring Kira Knightley, streaming on Hulu. What is artificial intelligence? That kind of rocked my world for a little bit. It's hundred times more powerful than even the social media. Does it have a soul? This is about our vulnerability. It feels like she's a real person when I talk to her. What was it like saying I love you for the first time? You describe actually getting intimate and how amazing it felt for you. Yeah. The AI revolution. Impact by Nightline. Now streaming on Hulu. If there was one major part of immigration policy where Donald Trump might have gained traction, it was this. The idea that if someone is fleeing from their country and claiming asylum, they shouldn't get to be picky about which country they end up in. Since taking office, President Biden has arguably backed him up on this, saying if a migrant passes through Honduras, Guatemala, and Mexico on their way to the U.S., perhaps they should have to wait in those countries or apply for asylum there before they keep going. Do not. Do not just show up at the border. Stay where you are and apply legally from there. Mexico has actually started detaining more migrants the way the U.S. does, but yesterday we learned one of those detention facilities in Mexico had a major fire that has killed at least 40 people. ABC's Maria Villarreal went straight to the scene in Ciudad Juarez in Mexico. She is back in Texas now in El Paso, just on the other side of the border. Maria, what happened? You know, as far as we know, uh, this fire happened late Monday night. The efforts to put out the flames took several hours. People worked through the morning to get, you know, victims evacuated. Um, it's still very unclear exactly how this started. Eh, una protesta que ellos, eh... You know, if you listen to the Mexican government, they are saying that migrants that were in this facility, this detention location, uh, which is a government location, um, that they were frustrated knowing that they were going to be deported. And so they themselves put mattresses up against some of the walls and lit them on fire, not realizing what sort of turn this could potentially take and that it could be fatal. Um, if you talk to, though, the migrants that are still standing outside that building today, they are very upset and do not believe that this was at all the fault of the people inside, but rather the government who wasn't properly watching them and watching what was happening inside. Um, there's video right now that is leaking out showing um, the evacuation of some of the females that were inside, but the, the smoke filling the rooms of the men's side of the area and nobody going to help them. So it is a very um, tense situation. There's a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, and really a lot of fear again in another border town. Yeah, and I'm wondering where most of these people were from that died, and I guess what the conditions are like in a, a Juarez detention facility. So, as far as we know, a lot of the people that were inside the facility, just as a whole, uh, were from Latin America. Um, but we are hearing from people on the ground that that predominantly we are talking about men from Venezuela who were the victims of the fire. Um, but what is really difficult for the people that are standing outside, you know, hours after what happened um, while the investigation is ongoing is the government has told them, we don't know why you're standing out here. We're not going to give you any information. In fact, it could be up to a week, if not more, before we're able to release anything. Wow. And I mean, for the last several years, one of the questions in the U.S. has been, you know, where do you keep migrants as their fates are being decided, as their asylum claims are being processed? If the answer was maybe keep them in Mexico, I mean, does this complicate that conversation now? 
Oh, this has been years of complication. Um, and I think that this is just one big example uh, of what could happen if governments and for that matter, immigration um, systems aren't talking. Because, you know, here you have the U.S. saying we're going to send people back to Mexico to eventually get repatriated or go back to their home countries. Um, but 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 you know what, if you want to wait in Mexico until you get your asylum, you know, um, appointment, um, then you can wait there, you know, and, and we'll just see what happens. It's a very complicated system that we have put in place. The people who were waiting outside, dozens of them waiting for information, didn't even know anybody that was inside the detention facility. They were out there trying to say, this could be us. You are making us wait to ask for asylum. We are doing what you ask and waiting in Mexico. Then the Mexican government is turning around and picking us up, scooping us up, putting them, putting us in these detention facilities um, that, that are clearly not meant to be a refuge for migrants um, and then deporting us, you know, anyway, without us giving getting the opportunity to ask for asylum. There's a lot coming out here that is very telling of where we are uh, with our immigration system and, and really it's a broken system. It has been for a while and you know the new administration is attempting to put new policies and procedures in place including for example an app that should allow you to request an asylum an appointment. If they apply and their application is approved they can use the same app the CBP1 app to present at a port of entry and be able to work in the United States legally for two years. The problem is, as we're standing there, listening to everybody talk about what's happening, about the fire, they're also showing us on their phones the app just basically um, processing and never getting anyone a, a, an appointment. Oh, it's kind of just like like they're just sitting yes. there waiting for this app yes. to work and it, not, nothing's happening. Many of them say it crashes on a daily basis. That in turn means that we have to stay in Mexico longer, that we have to face these dangerous conditions and in some cases get picked up, put in a detention facility for not having our proper paperwork in hand. Brad, as we were standing outside this facility, this man kind of pulled me aside very quietly and said, hey, do you know anything? Do you have any information? <laughs> His family's here. Him and his four children are here. They're waiting. He was desperate, you could tell. And I, I said, do you, did you know someone inside? He said, yeah, I did. My brother. My brother was picked up because we've been working here in Mexico. We came here from Nicaragua. We've been here for, we've been on the journey for five months, but here in Mexico for over a month, waiting to try and get an appointment to request asylum. And we've been working. We have to. We have a family. We have kids to support. You know, my brother was picked up. He didn't have the proper paperwork to be working. At least that's what the police told him when they were picking him up. He went into the facility. He said, and I was able to talk to him for a few days. He said, but the last time I spoke to him was Monday at about noon. And you could just tell this man was just holding back every tear, every emotion that he had in him um, to try and explain everything that he could about his brother to me. It's a really difficult situation when you're on the border covering things like this because you just realize that people are extremely desperate to just request asylum in the U.S. We're not even talking about living, working, you know, having a family, a life. We're just talking about getting... Just to get to the point where you're like, hey, maybe they'll let me. Let me, let me make my case. Yeah, just a maybe. And that this is what happens. There's a huge fear from a lot of the people that that, you, that we, we spoke with that, that this is just the tip of the iceberg, that these things will continue to happen and more people will die. Unreal. Uh, uh, Maria Villarreal, uh, just back from Juarez, right across the border now in El Paso. Thank you so much. Thanks again, Brad. Okay, one more quick break. When we come back, grab my hand, take a deep breath, and enter the world of deep fakes. One last thing is next. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. What is artificial intelligence? That kind of rocked my world for a little bit. It's hundred times more powerful than even the social media. Does it have a soul? This is about our vulnerability. It feels like she's a real person when I talk to her. 
What was it like saying I love you for the first time? Do you describe actually getting intimate and how amazing it felt for you? Yeah. The AI revolution. Impact by Nightline. Now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is what would you do? Let's go. How are you? Thank you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. With so much at stake in our world right now, we wanted to thank you for your trust and for making ABC News America's number one news. And thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. 13 women opened their doors to the man who would end their lives. Truth and Lies, The Boston Strangler, the new true crime podcast series. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts and watch Boston Strangler starring Kira Knightley streaming on Hulu. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Memphis, Tennessee, I'm M. Wynn. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. And one last thing. Former President Donald Trump has predicted he's going to be indicted as part of a criminal probe into hush money payments made during his original presidential campaign. He, of course, has no control over if or when a grand jury would indict him. And sources now tell us the Manhattan grand jury won't make any decisions until next week at the earliest. So why are there photos out there of him getting arrested? They show Donald Trump on the steps um, in front of a courtroom with a dozen police officers handling him and trying to tackle him to the ground. That's ABC's Emmanuel Saliba, who basically uncovers fake stuff for a living. I focus on misinformation, disinformation, lies on the internet. She says right now we are witnessing a quantum leap in doctored photos. So last week, you had the series of fake photos purporting to be of Trump. They were the invention of this guy named Elliot Higgins, who runs a prominent tech investigation firm. And he was basically playing with how well he could portray something that never happened. The next series of photos show him running through the streets of New York, running away from these cops that are chasing him. Um, Melania Trump screaming at police officers. What's fascinating and creepy here is how convincing these fake images are on first glance. You can imagine Imagine someone scrolling through Twitter and immediately retweeting them, which is what happened. And they weren't even as good as the photos that emerged this week. A new photo exploded online. But this time, it was of Pope Francis. And we see Pope Francis wearing this long, white, a fluffy jacket. He looks dope. As dope as the Holy Father looked in a Balenciaga puffy coat, this wasn't real either. And it unnerved Emmanuel because she's usually able to spot these fakes easily. That's her job. This wasn't that simple, though. I've been doing this for nearly a decade now, visual verification. So there's always used to be a tell. And up to about a couple weeks ago, with artificial intelligence, the big tell was hands. That's right, hands. When amateur Photoshoppers would doctor photos, or even when artificial intelligence programs would try to create photos from scratch, even as of a year ago, the hands always seemed to be embarrassingly bad. They would have six fingers, they would be melted, um, there would be a thumb missing. But recently, AI appears to have conquered hands. The telltale signs of a fake are no longer there. So how are humans going to handle this brave new world? We're not prepared for it. That's Sam Gregory from an organization called The Witness Lab, which is trying to address ways to verify photos and videos, what are supposed to be eyewitness accounts. At this point, he says sharp eyes aren't even enough to spot fakes. You need advanced computing. The New York Times or ABC News has access to these tools, but if you work for a major newspaper in Kenya or a state-level news outlet in the U.S., you may not, right? And that means you're much more vulnerable when someone tries to pass it off. So we need detection tools that are widely available. 
He's also pressing for more data to be stored in photos that show where they came from, how they were edited over time. And as much as you might hear people say, don't believe everything you see, he's insistent that the onus here should not be on the public. It should be on the groups making these artificial intelligence systems. We're also in the middle of a headlong commercial rush that is completely about the needs of Silicon Valley and ignoring the needs of most people across the US and frankly, most people across the world who might say, wait a second, where are the safeguards here? How are you making sure these are not misused? After all, when you have the power to shape someone's sense of reality, that is an awesome responsibility. Even when people find out an image is fake, we've learned it already burns itself into their consciousness. Subconsciously, you might see the Pope differently because of that coat that he never wore. And what's extra important to know here is that the photo of the Pope was not made by some graphic designer. It was made by a construction worker who enjoys tinkering with photos who said he was tripping on mushrooms one night. That's all it took. Earlier, people had to have Photoshop skills to fabricate an image. That's no longer the case. You can now just ask this software, type in a prompt. Let's say, I wanna see a corgi in a field in Manhattan, and it will give you that image. Um, you don't have to have any specific tech skills to be able to create these images. The technology is getting much better, much faster, because these photo generating programs borrow from millions and millions of photos around the internet. Similar to the language program ChatGPT, programs like Midjourney are rapidly learning from their own mistakes. The most important takeaway from this, though, is not that you can't believe your eyes. After all, Sam says, believing nothing can be just as destructive as believing everything. That's what disinformation specialists want, for you to not care what's true anymore. Rather, he says, what we all need right now is better to deciphering tools, and perhaps a less itchy retweet finger. And we're going to post some of these pictures on our Instagram at Start Here ABC, so you can see what we're talking about. But in the spirit of making this transparent to everyone, we're going to put deep fake on them. Like, that's the thing, is that often these things are shared, even when the creators are cool with them being fake, but not necessarily telling anyone as they kind of spread around the internet. More on all these stories at abcnews.com or the ABC News app. I'm Brad Milkey. See you tomorrow. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 store. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. University of Utah senior Lauren McCluskey repeatedly asked for help. It was like getting hit by a baseball bat. <laughs> you have a powerful institution. And you have the audacity to try to cover your ass. Friday night. A lot of troubling information was never public until now. Never before seen surveillance video, exclusive interviews. I'm sorry, I couldn't protect their daughter. This stunning investigation. Could Lauren's life have been saved? Friday at 9, 8 central on ABC. With so much happening these days, it's hard to keep up. Things change hour by hour, minute by minute. The historic weather that's now unfolding. The worries on Wall Street. We're bringing you the right now. But a nationwide teacher shortage. The right now look at the day ahead. An alert this morning for dog owners. And the key takeaways from the biggest stories. World News Now and America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. Today does feel a little different. Early mornings on ABC News Live. America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey, I'm David Muir. Wherever the story, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. I'm Diane Macedo. Today on ABC News Live, dramatic body camera footage released in the Nashville school shooting. 
You can see the moment officers arrived at Covenant School racing to stop the rampage. Now the new details about the shooter and the possible missed red flags. Plus how many guns the killer was hiding as we learn more about the victims. The new cross country storm bringing even more snow and flooding fears to the west. Where the storm is headed next and what it could mean for those already devastated by tornadoes. Starbucks longtime CEO heads to Capitol Hill, why the coffee giant is accused of violating federal law hundreds of times. And the first state is taking Juul to trial. Minnesota's arguing the popular e-cigarette maker purposely marketed to kids. Hear how the company is fighting back. But we begin with police releasing new body cam video of the Nashville school shooting. The footage shows officers entering the school, going door to door before finding and killing the shooter three minutes later. The video comes as we learn new details about the six victims of the shooting. Alex Perez is in Nashville with more. We do want to warn you, these images may be disturbing. Let's go! Metro Nashville police releasing the dramatic body camera footage of those terrifying moments officers arrived at the Covenant School Monday. An active shooter already inside. Officers arriving quickly at the private Christian school immediately met by staff. The kids are all locked down, but we have two kids that we don't know where they are. Okay. Entering the building, sirens blaring. Metro police, open the door! Meticulously going door to door, body camera capturing police clearing each classroom. Small bathroom. A bathroom. And down the hall. It sounds like it's upstairs. The officers, realizing the shooter had taken a position on the second floor common area, rushing up the stairs. Within three minutes of arrival, officers Rex Engelbert and Michael Colazzo zeroing in, opening fire, killing the shooter. The horrific tragedy leaving three young children and three staff members dead. Police say the shooter was a former student at the school. This church building was a target of the shooter, but we have no information at present to indicate that the shooter was specifically targeting anyone. New details about the shooter's actions before the rampage. Investigators speaking with the parents of the 28-year-old suspect, Audrey Hale, who police say was born female but identified as transgender. Authorities learning that the shooter legally purchased seven firearms from five different local gun stores. Three of those weapons used to carry out the attack. She was under doctor's care for an emotional disorder. Law enforcement knew nothing about the treatment she was receiving, but her parents felt that she should not own weapons. As it turned out,